back here at SeaWorld San Antonio to show you what you can fit on as a plus size rider. For reference, I am currently 345 pounds with a 52 inch waist and I am five foot eight inches tall. The fountain is up and running. Last time I was here, it was in the off season. Today it is the middle of summer and you can definitely feel it. And this place is packed. So I'll get through as much as I can to show you guys all of the rides and the different shows and attractions and everything that's going on here in SeaWorld this summer. We are starting off by seeing the beluga whale. And yes, I am in the splash zone. There is the splat kid splash area. Also my splash area because it is hot and yes, I'm taking advantage of it. <laughs> Quick walkthrough of the kids area. There are some, well, a couple of games over there. And then parents uh, are plus size folks. You can ride Super Grover's Boxcar Derby. You have to be able to fit the seat belt on you for the merry-go-round. So you may not be able to do that one. It's also the only one that a wheelchair can go on uh, in the entire park. You'll also be able to ride Abby Cadabby's Rock and Wave. But I was not able to do Elmo's Dolphin Dive or Big Bird Spinning Reef. If you like, you can get photos with some of the Muppets at different times of the day, or the characters from Sesame Street. They have an open play area over here. These are the type of areas I really think that parks need more of, just because you get tired of waiting in line, and this one is well shaded for the most part. Fat testing Steel Eel at SeaWorld San Antonio. Before we get to the fat test, here is some information about the Steel Eel. Steel Eel opened in 1999 and is made by D.H. Morgan Manufacturing. It is 150 feet high and reaches speeds up to 65 miles per hour. The track is about uh, 3,700 feet and lasts about two minutes. You do have to be 48 inches tall to ride this ride. This is the only roller coaster that does not have a test seat. They do have some cubbies over there that I can put the stuff into. So this one has a lap bar and a seat belt, which is unusual. They both buckle in the middle. So I always recommend pulling the seatbelt all the way out and then buckling it in and then sitting down into it. That one was fine. Let's see if I can get this down now. My feet, my legs fit under it, we'll see. It's not locking, I don't know if they have to lock it or what. Superman. Really? I love Superman. It was so packed. Uh, so, yeah, we're, this, uh, yeah. we're, we're going to take seat belts and then we're going to close this up. Oh, okay. Got it. So they check the seat belts first. Which is an interesting thing. They actually do two checks for this. So they have to do the seat belts first and then the bars. So it does slow down loading. But you can see they're still even on a fairly busy day. It's a weekday, but it's the middle of summer and it's pretty busy here. Uh, they're still not lined. All right. Looks like they've now turned that on, and I can pull that down, and it fits. We good? Yeah. Uh, do you want to go for one more click? Or... I'm good. If I mean, I'm. Comf I mean, do you need? Do it, does it need to be another click? Oh, there's a white line? Yeah, the arrow's supposed to be behind uh, So we need to go down another click? It clicked one good time. Huh? It clicked one good time. So it clicked another click. Is it, but like, is it behind the white line though? It's like right. In the middle? Right in the middle. It should be fine. Hold on, let me check. Oh, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. All right. I'm going to push it down a little bit more just in case. 
that was a great ride and I did it did pass the fat test but here's one thing I want to throw out there is if you ever feel unsafe even if you fit on a ride you should feel comfortable saying hey I appreciate it but I'm gonna choose to get off ultimately your safety is in your hands don't just leave it up to the hands of someone else uh, these team members are absolutely phenomenal I think they're pretty well trained on safety but you've got to be set you've got to be in charge of your own safety too never let someone else ultimately make those decisions for you but the team here at SeaWorld is phenomenal and I did love the ride and I double checked and it was definitely way past the line on that <laughs> on there so we were good and I do appreciate the team members taking an abundance of caution to double check that and make sure make sure to follow along for more fat tests and to know what you can fit on at theme parks around the world Fat testing wave breaker, the rescue coaster here at San Antonio, Texas. Here's the test seat we'll be trying, but let me show you the ride first. Wave breaker open in June 2017. It's a launch roller coaster getting up to its top speed, which actually isn't that fast as it's considered a family roller coaster at 44 miles an hour and the maximum height of 61 feet. The entire roller coaster is about 26 feet, 2600 feet long uh, and it lasts about three minutes long that green light has to come on and yes it is scalding hot unfortunately it's not gonna happen so the wave breaker fails the fat test still and uh, this is still where I lost where I got my bag stolen it cost me like a thousand dollars to replace everything so I hate this right with my platinum uh, membership here at SeaWorld I uh, annual pass I get a animal interaction so i'm getting a private it's not always private but for me it's going to be private uh interaction with one of the penguins so this will be awesome the little penguins in there have uh, some jewelry they all have id brands so if you're taking a look they have four colors uh the first color if you're looking from the back of the penguin to the front tells us what type of penguin it is so the rock covers have red the uh, king penguins have purple and so on and then the next three just uh, coordinate with the numbers so we can keep up on track of you know who had the right one today and that kind of stuff this is the penguin you're going to meet today. <laughs> <laughs> if I get to take him home, I'm good. <laughs> Come on, got a friend. Hey! Got a friend. Come on, buddy. What's your name, sir? Jason. Jason. Jason Oz? So his name is not Oz like Ozzy Osbourne, right? Love, love, rock and roll. Oswald Cobblepot, the penguin man from Batman. <laughs> so why do they why do they always have their things like this for the most part? Oh, so that's just their posture, how they stand. Bless you, bless you. Here, Oz. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Jason, there you go. Smile, Jason. Oh yeah, Oz. Over here. Over. When you don't have Mr. Beast's budget to go to Antarctica. Catching a new show here at the Sea Star Theater. Imagine Imagine Ocean, the live glow in the dark family musical. The air conditioning in here is awesome. I don't care what the show is. I think that being ocean friends forever is the biggest treasure of all. Fat testing journey to Atlantis here at SeaWorld San Antonio. Journey to Atlantis has a height requirement of 39 inches and it's considered I guess a hybrid coaster as it's both a water coaster and a roller coaster. This one opened in SeaWorld San Antonio in 2007. As you can kind of see, you go up and then they actually spin you around. You go over a little hill and then down into the water. Though if you really want to get wet, you come over and stand where the splash zone is. The one at SeaWorld uh, Orlando is much more thematic. There are four seats in a row and it does come around uh, your legs. It pulls down, but it doesn't go around both sides. For this one, it only went around the right side of my leg, which is great because it makes it a lot easier to fit into these things. Yes, sir. Looks like Atlantis might pass the fat test. I'll let you know after the ride. So if you can see there on the top of the hill, you actually get turned around uh, twice, and then they send you down the hill uh, and back up backwards, and then you go down the main hill uh, forwards for the big splash. 
you actually would get a lot wetter standing on the side than um, in the boat. It is an extremely short ride. It's literally up and down. Uh, so consider that if you decide to take the time to ride it, but the line moved quickly and there wasn't a lot going on. So uh, I think it was a great ride and it passed the fat test. And definitely a great way to cool off on a late July day. If you would like some more resources for plus size travel, make sure to check out resources.fattestedtravel.com. Yep, I definitely got a lot wetter doing that. <laughs> Up next, it's Tidal Surge. Tidal Surge just opened at SeaWorld in 2022 and can hold a total of 40 riders on both pendulum swings. It starts off slowly going back and forth. It does not spin, but it does reach heights of up to 135 feet and speeds of up to 68 miles per hour. You have to be 48 inches tall to ride. Here's the test seat. This one has to come across your stomach and there's the lights. I don't know if you can actually even see the lights hardly in here. Oh yeah, another hot seat. Uh, I do fit in the seat, but you can see this thing is barely moving. It's, there's no space for it to go. Uh, unfortunately, tidal wave fails the fat test. Don't forget to follow along though to see what I fit in. Taking a moment to say hello to all the beautiful flamingos. Time to fat test the Texas Stingray here at SeaWorld San Antonio. The Texas Stingray is a wooden roller coaster and it opened in February of 2020 and we all know what happened very shortly after that. So not a lot of people got to ride this wooden roller coaster before it was shut down. This wooden roller coaster is meant to give that classic feel, so it is a little bit rough. It was actually designed by a company that specializes in wooden roller coasters, the Great Coasters International. It has a maximum height of 96 feet and reaches speeds up to 55 miles per hour. This track length is 3,379 feet long, making it one of the longest roller coasters in Texas. The coaster has high speed turns, airtime moments, and a 100 foot drop. You'll also notice branding and interesting facts about the Texas Stingray all around this ride. Here's the vehicle. Nice bright green lights. Oh, and it actually turns red, okay. A little snug, but I do fit in the seat part. Let's see if we can get this down far enough to turn the light green. If you don't know, I am 345 pounds, 5'8", with a 52-inch waist. All right, I'll put it up under my gut at time. Nope, I don't think it's going to go. Sadly, the Texas Stingray fails the fat test. Let's see how far down it has to go. Oh, right there. That's where it turns green. Uh, on to the next one. Make sure to follow along to see what I actually fit in. It's kind of easy to miss, but right across from the Texas Stingray are these two rides up here. Up here, we've got Riptide Racers, res oh, sorry, Riptide Rescue and Sea Swinger. Next up, we fat testing Riptide Rescue. 45 inches to ride, 50 inches unaccompanied. So I'm still gonna test it, but I just had to watch a lady get walked off with her kid. And uh, the kid was very upset about it. Mom was fine, but this is a reminder that if you're having these, coming to these things, make sure to have these conversations with the kids beforehand so they know what to expect, especially if they're going to have to ride with an adult. Riptide Rescue is themed after a sea turtle rescue mission. It's a flat spinner ride with sea rescue boats known as gondolas. This theming is part of SeaWorld San Antonio's latest efforts to highlight the plight of the endangered sea turtles in the wild. All right, here is the vehicle. There's two seats. It just comes on around your legs. The seat actually fits fine. This thing is actually turning a little bit, but you can see kind of where the room is there. We'll see if I can make this work. That's how far it comes down for me. 
Apparently I was not supposed to pull on it. My apologies. Right there. Alrighty. Nope. I didn't think so. Alrighty. I appreciate you. There it is. How far down does it have to get? Right there? Yep. All right. Sea Swinger is having some mechanical difficulty, uh, but I did test it last time and it did not pass the fat test. Make sure to stop by the turtle reef and say hello to the fishies and the turtles. Here. Let's check out the orca experience here at SeaWorld San Antonio. If you didn't know, these will be the last orcas that SeaWorld has as they stopped their breeding of orcas in 2016. SeaWorld orcas average a lifespan of about 41 and a half years. Takara and Sakari. Kamea is the youngest member of the pod at just nine years old. Use of positive reinforcement training techniques be trained them in husbandry for healthcare behaviors. The water ride, Rio Loco, is still closed. I was here in the winter, so I assumed it was just closed for that, but I am surprised it seems to have been closed several days this summer, or for a while this summer. I wonder if it's under construction. So Rio Loco is just closed for maintenance. They have another water ride that's gonna open up eventually. It's called uh, Catapult. It's a log flume ride, but unfortunately it's still not open up. Looks like everything's in dry dock for now. Next up is the Great White. The Great White is an inverted roller coaster at SeaWorld San Antonio. That means that your legs are dangling down beneath the track. And this was actually the first uh, inverted roller coaster in Texas, built in 1997. It has a height of 108 feet high and reaches speeds up to 50 miles an hour. The track is 2,562 feet. The ride lasts about two and a half minutes long. You must be 54 inches tall to ride this ride and you'll experience loops, zero G rolls, and corkscrew turns. It's a shoulder harness and it does have the two seat belts which usually assign it is the larger seat. So the seat is really tight but I do fit in. Let's see. Come on, let's go play video games. There's that. Let's see if I can get those belts on. I would say we've still got quite a ways to go on this one. So unfortunately, the Great White does not pass the fat test. Look at all the different kettle corns they got. Caramel apple, flaming hot cheese, also aqua locus, fiesta flexus. This is where Catapult Falls is gonna ultimately be the world's steepest flume coaster. And I believe it's the first launch flume coaster. Let's go see the sea lions and otter show. I do appreciate that the performers take photos afterwards. Something more shows should have so you can meet them. 
Thanks for watching this SeaWorld plus size walkthrough. If you enjoyed this, make sure to check out the Bush Gardens walkthrough next.